Listen, my son seen the video that I did make in my doghouse, and he said it wasn't entertainment. So I'm putting entertainment on the front. So here's your entertainment. Put that fancy footwork. Now, let's build a damn doghouse. <laughs> this is Maurice Skilling again. Today I'm moving from working on my motorcycle to building a doghouse. I'm building a doghouse to stop from killing my little critters. God bless me with seven pit bull mixed puppies, and they can no longer stay in my garage. They have got to go. So what I did was look online and found a decent plan to build a doghouse, got my materials from Home Depot, which they're spread out all over the place here now. I'm just starting in the morning. The puppies are trying to help. And I'm gonna to try to give them tools if they can grab them. There's some good dogs and it looks like I may have to keep all seven of them unless I can find homes for them. Here's some more of the supplies. And actually, I could have built this dog house without buying much wood. I had a lot of wood around the house. So advice, look around your house before you start buying uh, any materials if you're going to build a doghouse. You may have them lying around. Uh, and what I'm going to use is the plywood that I used in the house, or in the garage rather, while I was housing the puppies. They've gotten way too big for this uh, little pen that was in my garage. It worked for a while, but all of them have, have learned now to climb right over the sides of that pen, so it's pretty much useless. And needless to say, once they get over that pen, they start tearing up things in my garage and defecating and urinating all over the place. They're puppies, though, so you got to give them a little leeway. So, in earnest, I'm focused on building this doghouse to get this project uh, done and to get my dogs out of my house into my kennel. All right. One of the first things I did uh, when I went and bought my supplies, I had to get some uh, uh, pressure treated wood and or the wood that won't rot with moisture. You go to Home Depot or Lowe's, they'll know exactly what you need. These uh, pieces here are going to go at the bottom of the pen. They're going to basically keep the plywood from sitting directly on the ground uh, so it won't rot out. So I'm going to start by cutting those pieces and fitting them together, together at the bottom. So I'm going to start by cutting those pieces and fitting them together at the bottom. I'm going to use uh, screws instead of nails. I want it to stay together once I build it. My plan is to paint it, waterproof it, and it'll be a permanent fixture. For these little puppies, that's the mother. Her name is Trina. This is her last litter of puppies, and she had eight. So we found a home for one, but until I find a home for these seven, they're going to be living right here with me. Oh. I forgot to add my disclaimer. Just so everybody knows, I'm not a carpenter. I'm actually a physician assistant. So these are talents that I've had buried for a while and I'm bringing them out to get this job done. Getting back to the project, to start with what I did was I laid all the wood out the way it was gonna fall uh, and the way I wanted to uh, screw the wood together at the bottom. Again, this is the bottom piece, and that's pressure-treated wood or the uh, wood that won't mildew and whatnot and, uh, uh, deteriorate if it's connected to moisture or to the ground. Uh, again, go to Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, they'll know what you need to put at the bottom of your cage. What I'm going to do is these are not going to sit directly on the ground. I'm still going to put some uh, bricks up under them, but I still wanted this kind of wood at the bottom so nothing would start rotting out or the plywood at the bottom wouldn't start rotting out. As you see, I have everything laid out together. Now what I'm going to do is start drilling the holes in the wood where they're connected so I can go ahead and uh, uh, connect the bottom piece of the uh, 
Now that I got everything uh, nice and laid out, what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, start drilling the holes so that I can uh, put the screws in and connect the bottom pieces. Then I'll flip this over. Again, this is the bottom half of the project, and this is pressure treated wood. All right. We got everything up on the table I'm using, and we got the holes drilled in. Okay. When I look for plans online or how to build a doghouse, one of the things I didn't get was uh, any idea of what supplies would be needed. This big piece of plywood I uh, found in my bonus room, uh, it's a piece of the flooring, so I had this piece already. But kind of guesstimate on how big you think you might need your doghouse. There are some size measurements I was given by the AFPC or QFTH or whatever dog group, but in general, just try to guesstimate uh, the size of your dog, and, and uh, uh, that way you'll, you'll have a good idea of what room you're going to need inside the, uh, the dog house. What I got also, these are two by fours here. I got one two by eight or it may have been a 2 by 10 one 2 by 8 or one 2 by 10 at any rate, uh, this is the pressure treated wood. I got it cut in half so I can bring it home. And it ended up being the almost the exact size I needed to put at the bottom of the, the doghouse. And I got uh, four 2 by 8s and those I got cut in half also so I can fit them in my truck and bring them home. Okay. So I also got some extra wood that I had, again, in my bonus room, just left over. So actually, I could have got away without buying any of that wood. And again, that's why I advise you to check and see what you already got at your house before you go out and start buying things. Uh, and also, like I was saying, I had these sheets of plywood. This is two sheets that are put together. Uh, again, just estimate or guesstimate what you might need, okay? And for the metal pieces, I got some thread drywall screws. I told the guys at Home Depot what I was going to build, and they recommended these. And I got uh, eight by threes so that I can get all the way through the two by fours and make a good solid bite into the other two by fours. And they're a pretty good size screw. So they went in real good, didn't have any problems. What I also advise you to do is go ahead and invest in a drill, okay? If you want to get out and do it, do it with a screwdriver and take 30 years and break your wrist and whatnot, you can. But I advise you just invest in a good drill, and you can get your drill bit, uh, uh, Phillips head drill bit, and it goes right in. makes your job a lot faster. Uh, also got some some rocks. I'm going to put these rocks at the bottom of my uh, pen so that the dogs don't make a mud pen out there. And uh, some more of the two by fours there. And this is going to go around the roof. This is that metal stuff that stops uh, the drip back down on the roof. That's a part of what I got on the uh, on the video I was able to come across on how to build a dog house. Uh, this is going to be my roof. This is another piece of uh, plywood I already had in the house. Actually, it, it was from the first litter that uh, Trina had. And I put this in here to separate the dogs from one side of my garage to the other side. Got a three-car garage. One side is, of course, for my motorcycles. Uh, and this is Sheba. She won't be rolled today because I'm designating this time to get this doghouse built so me and my dogs can... Uh, Keep a good working relationship, because to tell you the truth, I was about to kill him. At any rate, getting back to the build, uh, when everything is done, uh, I have all of this, uh, uh, of course, put back up and whatnot. And that piece of floorboard turned out to be one of the best things I came across, because it was just about the exact size I felt that I would need. It'll be enough room for Trina to get in there and the puppies to get in there. Uh, the puppies themselves, they generally uh, ball up in a corner somewhere, and uh, they don't really need much room to sleep. As they grow, I'll have to probably build another doghouse if I end up keeping them all. There they are. While well, I'm working, they're knocked out, sleeping. Almost time for them to eat, though, so they'll be up here again in a minute. All right. I was really working it out, and then I decided to stop for a minute and 
make another little short video showing you what I've done so far. That's the bottom piece uh, on top of the treated wood underneath it. And what I did was I went down the sides about every 10 to 12 inches. I drilled holes, holes in which I'm going to put these in to go ahead and bolt the floor down. As you see, the puppies are helping me again. But about every 10 to 12 inches, and I didn't measure it, I pretty much guesstimate it. Uh, and after this, the floor will be bolted down. Now the next thing I seen on the design that I seen on the internet was put out the sides of the plywood down to the ground and bolted it directly on the treated wood, okay? It's my ideology that I don't want the plywood anywhere near the ground. So I'm going to bolt mine up here. It's going to be a little different. I'll stop uh, once I get that process started and show you how I'm going to do that. I want my plywood pretty much to be flush right here. Uh, again, I'll stop in another moment to show you how that process works out. All right. We're moving on to the next phase. I'm going to make the roof slanted, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut a slant in the side plywood. This is going to be the piece that goes on top. The plywood's going to be stacked pretty much like that plywood right there. Come around and get a picture of that. Plywood's going to be stacked like that on top of each other. What I'm going to be doing is cutting a slant straight across to give me that uh, slant in the roof so the water will run down off the roof. And then I'll put a top on it and go ahead and sheetrock, uh, uh, not sheetrock it, but put the, uh, you call that the ceiling, uh, the roof, uh, I'm, I'm kind of lost at the moment. Of course, I'm using general terms. I'm not Mr. Supercontractor. These are just things you can do yourself. Uh, I'm going to think of that in a minute. Uh, Max, what do you call the stuff that goes on top of the roof to stop it from leaking? Shingles. Yes. That's what I was reaching for. I'm going to shingle the doghouse uh, also and... Uh, Undercover that with the felt cover, uh, just like you should with any roof. But that's what I'm about to do now. Once I draw this line, I'm going to go ahead and rip this, and then I can start putting the rest of the doghouse together. I'm going to have to go ahead and move the doghouse over into the uh, dog pen once I'm done with this piece here, because if I put it together out here, we won't be able to get it in the pen. So common sense tells me to move it before we put it together. <laughs> We're going to break off now until I get this piece done, and then I'll show you what I got once I'm done. You can stop it, man. Yeah, I want to share another quick thing before I go ahead and rip this, uh, this sheet to get my uh, roofing together. I bought this Black & Decker table some time ago. It was on sale either at Lowe's or Home Depot. Never thought I'd really get to use it, but I thought I was going to have to get someone to hold this board for me uh, while I ripped it. I'm not going to have to get anybody. It's got these two little attachments that will clamp down real tight on the board and hold it steady so I can go ahead and rip this piece here. Uh, without that, I would have needed another uh, two hands, which I don't have, and I can't use my feet. So uh, just wanted to make note of that. This is an excellent table. Not real heavy. You can fold it up and pack it with you, basically. Uh, just wanted to mention that uh, aside. One last thing before I rip this piece. I'm ripping this piece with the uh, groove side down. This is a groove on one side of the plywood. On the other side of the plywood, you got this, uh, uh, well, this is actually the groove. The other side is the male piece. It can fit right down in here. My intent is for this piece to be the top piece, which this groove is going to fit down into the bottom piece which has the female side, to give me somewhat of a little seal. I'm going to secure it with two by fours, but you'll get to see that. I wanted to make this note before I rip this piece to make sure that if you're going to use this particular uh, video that you do it this way, it's going to work out better, I feel. It's going to give me a tighter little seal right there. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Since I'm ripping wood, I'm going to go ahead and cut my doorway. For the vertical lines, I'm just going to use these lines right here. For the horizontal line, I'm just going to use this line up here. As far as the height and width, I just kind of guesstimate it, looking at my dog, as far as a good uh, height and width for her to get in and out without leaving too big a hole. 
I'm also going to put something over the front of this to stop the wind from being able to blow in. Ain't quite figured that piece out yet, but I'll, I'll find something that will go there. that will let her go in and yet keep the uh, cold air, wind, and rain out of the doghouse itself. So I'm going to go ahead and rip this piece here, or, or rather cut my doorway. All right, there's your door. Cut fairly straight. I'll be able to do some cosmetic stuff on the back end, but I went ahead and ripped that door. This is how the one of the side pieces is going to look. Again, that top piece has a groove in it. Uh, the bottom piece has a groove in it. The top piece has a male piece in it. The male piece will slide right down in that groove. And let's get it from the right direction. You got the slant from front to back of your roof right there so that the rainwater will run right off the top of it. I'm going to shingle the top anyway, but uh, that's going to give you your water runoff. I just got to throw this in. These are my helpers. The puppies I'm building the doghouse, uh, pretty much to house and protect outside my garage again. You see how much they're helping me? Somehow they already know that this is being built for them. They're already picking out this spot, so to speak. <laughs> That's funny.